I feel like a weird framing going on. Hi, everybody. Hello. Whoops. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's a bad start. We were here early and set up and everything, and then I actually went to broadcast. I was like, this camera looks weird. It's like my hair is looking weird. Oh, well. You know when you like you let it dry up and then you try to take it down, it's got like weird creases. That's what's happening. Oh yeah. And it's been raining all but three days in August here in Virginia. A lot of rain. It's a lot of Yes. It's uh August nineteenth. Episode who knows what, because we haven't been counting. Because we have no sense of time right now. You're gonna be due for a haircut soon too. Yeah, it's starting to get uh starting to visit Shagville again here. Um but anyway. I didn't shower today either. That's not something you normally share with people. Yeah, whatever. You haven't showered yet. True. The night Some is Some people shower at night. That's true. I shower at night. I didn't say I didn't need to. Anyway, what a great way to start the broadcast. <laughs> uh, all right. We have some new stickers to show you. Hello, Already seen some of the conversation talking about. Too. Yeah, we so, alluded to this. Yeah, so we finally, it's been almost a year of the same five stickers. We intended yeah. to switch it up for the holidays last year. It just didn't happen. And then COVID and all the things. So finally, we figured out how to do it. And then um, we made a couple changes with it too. So I want to show you the five designs. Um, you can try to request them with your order. We'll do our best to honor them. But they are random. Um, if yes. you... Your very first order with us, you get the blue splatter and you get the little mm -hmm. card from the two of us. But then in every subsequent order, you get a random sticker. So first we have the Amethyst de Laurel ink splatter. It's not actually glittery. Um, just, you know. It's a picture of glitter. It's a picture of glitter. Um, one change we made with these, you notice a barcode. That's to help our team pull these. And there's less of a chance that we'll accidentally miss one instead of having to remember every time to put a sticker in this way it'll appear on their pick list we got a little logo in there but the nice thing about these is they are kiss cut which i can't do this looking at the camera they're super easy easy to peel to peel instead of like, like cut around it. the old ones were like cut to it and it was like some people didn't know they were stickers and others it was hard yeah. to uh, peel them so here's your amethyst de laurel that's a jacques Bon ink we have another ink splatter. This is uh, Robert Oster. Um, I just looked it up earlier today. It's one of the gold ones. Um, it's not gold Antigua. I'm drawing a blank now. We'll have to look it up. It's one of the gold ones that we currently sell. We did that swap a long time ago. We have, um, to match my shirt, our right on logo that we kind of did for our 10th anniversary last year. So that's a square sticker. African gold. Thank you. Yep, African gold. Bingo. This is one of Drew's drawings. Um, he's big into uh, rock metal. Power metal. Power metal. So it's the, you know, hands still in the rocker symbol. Uh, hold the fountain pen. Do you know what ink he used for this? I know someone's going to ask. I don't recall. Maybe he'll remember. Yeah, he might remember. And then finally, the Ellie Turtle. Yay. Per your request right here in this broadcast. That's right. Um, doesn't have the baby turtles with it. It's just, just the mama turtle, but just so cute. So there you go. These are our five random stickers oh. that are included in orders right now. So we just changed over like Thursday or Friday last week. Awesome. Um, now we're getting some questions. Um, you do are. you know when Newler's Inks, namely Liberty's Elysium, will be back in stock? Um, hopefully soon. We've had an order for months. Um, we did see that. Uh, so when, when COVID so, first started. Funny story. <laughs> so, you know, we stopped shipping for a while. So our order slowed down. And I think everyone else kind of slowed down. So Nathan at Noodlers is like, I have free time. I'll bring the 16 ounce bottles back. So they started taking special orders and requests for those. Um, I just saw an email this week that they're finally um, they're shipping now. All the pre-orders are, are, you know, the people who ordered it, they're being shipped now. From like five months ago. And it wasn't five months ago, maybe four months ago. But I know for him, this is part of why we did we stopped taking special orders for them. They take just about as long to make a single 16 ounce as There's a case, case which is 144 bottles of the three ounce. So I was like, where do I want him spending his time on a single order or 144 potential it's like, orders? It's like a passion project for Nathan. So you gotta let him like and he does a custom do label for each soul, one. You know? Yeah. So I think what happened is they got a lot of orders for those and that kind of took this is my theory i don't know this for sure but that it took up his bandwidth and now hopefully he'll get back to 
the normal cases, like the Baltimore Canyon ink um, should be coming soon. So, yep. yeah, we, they've been on order. We're just waiting for him to make them. Yeah. I don't know if there's like a dye component issue or COVID supply chain stuff, but we're waiting. Yep. Yes, if you had an order today, you will get one of the new stickers. So we started, I keep dropping them. We started these um, like Thursday, Friday last week. Yeah. Awesome. <sighs> where, we get, where we carry Waterman pens, we get asked that from time to time. No immediate plans. We've looked into them. I will say we're not carrying any new brands for the rest of the year that we're planning on. It's just too hard it's right very, now being remote. It's a lot of work. Um, yeah. It's very, very So no new brands uh, planned. Mm -hmm. Brian, do you know if I can replace a stipula Etruria plastic bead and housing to ebonite? Technically, yes. It's a number six. If it will fit, but you'd have to get the right ebonite feed and you have to heat set it and stuff like that. So it's possible, but I don't have like spare ebonite feeds or anything like mm. that. So yes, is the answer sort of. Josh is very unhappy with both of us. He had finally reined in his spin pending. Oh, yeah. And today he sees uh, an email about the Endura Abalone. Why, yep. why do you do this? Well, do you have one of those? Cause we're the worst. I do. I know we brought one home. I do. Might just so happen. So coming in October, um, what Josh is talking about is a Conklin Endura in abalone. Oh. And there are two versions. One has gold, and these are limited editions. One has rose gold trim um, that all the dealers will have. And then we have a chrome trim version that is just a Gule exclusive. Um, smaller, smaller quantities of that one. That's probably a really loud zipper for everyone there. Yeah, it's really heavy too. So you hear all my grunting. <laughs> I gotta find it. It's so pretty. It's and it's a really affordable dollars. price. Uh, it's actually more affordable even than the uh, Retro 51 Avalone fountain pen. So um, it's really interesting because it looks like it's faceted. Um, and the Avalone shell itself is, but it's coated in a clear resin that's round. So the pen feels round, but it looks faceted. So it's yeah. very trippy. It's because the Avalone is like, you know, straight pieces of shell. Yeah, it's real shell uh, screw cap. And it does um, screw onto the back. Um, part of why they do that, I assume, is you don't want to, you know, push onto the, the shell. Yeah. yeah. So um, really pretty, one hundred sixteen dollars um, chrome trim or rose gold trim coming in October. So that's very exciting. A lot, a lot of new stuff coming. Yovo nib, got a flex nib on there. This is like hopefully, in the shell. hopefully the Yovo flex will be out by then. Yeah, so. it's not a subtle pen. Like if you pull this out in a meeting, you're gonna get attention. Yes, that is a Jake Weidman, uh, crazy glare, but that's the uh, penmanship. We used to have the uh, old man in the sea hanging there, but I guess between some video shoots, it got changed out. So penmanship's currently hanging out. I just up. changed it because I wanted to put a different picture. That in. was in your office. It was. And we've been home so long, home. we're like, well, we might as well bring our artwork home. And I've got craftsmanship over there, too. So I'll just rotate them. Is the grip <laughs> on the Traveler's Company brass pen slippery? I haven't used one of these. On the brass pen? Mm -hmm. Well, it's brass. Yeah. Is it slippery so though? Uh, I mean, I've never really had issues with like slippery metal grips. Some people are like, I can't use metal grips because yeah, like I sweat and it's just like, oh, I've, I, it. oh, I've never, gosh. I, had an issue. I just cleaned mine. So I'll give it to you and you tell me what you think. Mine's patinaed a little bit. So after it patinas a little bit, it's really not slippery at all. But it, it's metal. So it's not like it's. Yeah, Jake and, and Brian are now like besties now. They're like legit good friends. Um, I need the other part of this. This is just too small to hold by that, itself. That pen is particularly like, by itself, hard to hold. I'm like I could like hide it. Like, yeah. there's a pen in my hand, you know. You could like look like magic, like you're drawing with your finger. Yeah, so you absolutely need to post it for it to be usable. Um, for me, this I don't like this pen because it's too thin it just especially with my four fingered thin. grip it's like, like there's it. not enough pen for me to hold i like it as a pocket pen um is it slippery a little bit a little bit but not as like bad as it's not too crazy else. yeah uh no plans for waterman at the moment yeah yeah love my waterman kareen that's a good pen i is have a, one of those and i like it is a screw on posting feature on the new endura a new feature for enduras going forward i don't believe so i think it's just given the nature of the shell so like we do have an Endura in wood right, right. now that is um, not, not screw cap. Yeah, I think it is very screw by, post, very yeah. by model. Yeah. Do we have the Conklin Rainbow that's coming up? You don't have one of those. I don't have one of those. We borrowed one for photo, but we don't we don't have it. That should be here within a week. Um, I thought it would be here later this week, but I think it'll be next week. It looks pretty bad. It's very cool. It like wow. 
the colors just explode off that pen. Yeah, request a list on our website, like nib sizes, like number five, number six, number eight, et cetera. Um, we try to in the product descriptions where we, I, I do in the product description generally when I can. Um, but even like a number six is not the same, all number sixes. Like sometimes the curvature is different, the housing can be different. So we generally don't be like, it, yeah, it's, it's tough because <laughs> I think the reason a lot of people want to see number six, number five, all that is so that you know which ones have some interchangeability. But the problem is every single one needs like an asterisk by it because even if you have a number six Bach versus a number six Yovo, the thread pattern on the nib housing is not the same on those two. So yes, technically the nibs are number six, but you have to pull them out. You can't just screw them to swap them. So that's kind of complicated. And then Noodler's is number six, but the curvature is a little different. So you can't quite fit it into most, pen and it's just too many exceptions to standardize it on the site. That's why we don't do it. A couple more good questions here. I bought the Claire Fontaine Blooming notebook for my daughter who has her first love. I asked for the heart you guys came through. Thank you. Oh. And then someone asked the Blooming, when will they be back? I miss them. I was waiting for my birthday coupon. Um, uh. So we have, I believe September is when that French order restock will be coming in. And we did expand um, our French order because these were so successful. So we're adding an A5 wire bound in all of the styles that we currently carry. And we're adding like three new styles as well. Um, so I am I think I was gonna work on creating those next week uh, for the website. So let's check back for those. Yes. Um, can you scroll back up there? If you're not aware of the birthday coupon, if you're a newsletter subscriber, you get a coupon. You have to enter your birthday. So if you scroll down to the bottom of any email, it'll there's a manage preferences link. Click on that and put in your birthday, month, date, year format, and you get a coupon on your birthday for a random pack of ink samples. Free, okay. no minimum. There you go. Just pay shipping. Yeah. Cool. Um, any news on Conid pens resuming taking orders? Um, I've heard rumors, but we don't have any direct connection with Conid. Yeah. Um, plans for the Sailor Compass. Have you seen some models? Yes. Um, we have one right here. It is on the way to us. It was shipped. Uh, is it's taking a little bit longer so it's arriving i want to say on tuesday um so hopefully we'll be able to launch next wednesday but um yeah. check our website those are our photos so we did um mm -hmm. get to shoot them all it's a very cool pen um i think this is going to be a fantastic holiday season pen yeah clear feed which is pretty cool not a lot of pens have that one thing i do want to say about the holidays um i know it seems crazy to talk about it right now but do consider placing your order sooner than later um, given various issues with uh, different carriers, not just USPS, but FedEx as well. Everyone's crazy backlogged and a little nervous about the holiday season and, and how behind everyone's going to get that. And we're also running into some supply chain issues because of COVID, mm -hmm. um, restocking certain products. So if you know what you want, um, we didn't, we didn't have a lot I would encourage issues. you not to wait till like December. Um, even October, not, not too early to start thinking yeah. about that. We didn't have a lot of stocking issues for a while, but I think now it's like manufacturers are now getting delayed because they've depleted their stock and they're or they getting, don't have a part. They don't have random raw materials or whatever. So it's like kind of like downstream. Now we're starting to feel the effects of some of the COVID setbacks months later behind the manufacturers. Um, have you used the Sailor Manio Haha ink? Is it just me or does it feel particularly dry? Um, I have and I love that ink. Um, I do agree it is dry. It is dry. Um, I've had mine in a broad and I use really nice paper mm -hmm. um, and you get those really nice shading properties with it. But it, it does run on the dry side for sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of this, some of those like high shading Sailor inks, I do find a bit dry. Yeah. I find like the more watery an ink is, often the more dry it will feel. I think. Uh, and again, this is purely based on experience and kind of subjectivity. The more saturated it is, the wetter it often is. Yeah, well. and I think that's, and it's actually interesting because the more dye there is in an ink, dye is actually drier. So I think, and because there's more dye, I think a lot of manufacturers add surfactants or add things to help mm. the ink flow through. So I think, you know, the, the more dye there is, the more stuff there is to help the dye flow through, which then makes it feel wetter, maybe. I, I don't know. We don't have like detailed chemistry on every ink. It's a bit mysterious uh, how it all works. Um, but that is my ca casual observation. Having used a number of inks, um, the, the desaturated ones tend to feel a little drier on the page. Speaking 
Oh gosh, this is heavy. You really brought all of them. I did. Speaking of sailor, Jeff's asking about the sailor studio ace. There are 100, actually 97 currently, because there are three that got discontinued and three new ones coming this fall. So currently 97, but there are three. Um, they're just being yeah. cycled out. So um, Jeff was asking about the numbering system. So I think I kind of hacked what I think the numbering system is um, because I had to create all the product listings for our site and look up what color each one was. So um, they're not numbered one through 100. They're actually um, in the teens to the 900 somethings. Mm -hmm. So the first digit, and this is my theory, I haven't heard this directly from Sailor, but based on what I've observed. Your deductive reasoning. My, my deductive reasoning. The first digit, the hundreds place, is how saturated it is um, and like how like dark versus vibrant or light. So like the okay. zeros, the ones, the twos, those are your more pastels, your heavy shaders, okay. um, your eight, nine hundreds. Those are your like really vibrant colors. So um, it kind of goes from, I guess, light to dark or I'll say like heavy shaders to like heavy saturated colors as you go from the one hundreds through the nine hundreds. The second digit, the tens digit, refers to what color family it's in. So um, try to find, and some of these, like we have in the exact same, uh, these are not in order. The last digit isn't as meaningful, although I do find the zeros tend to be a more pure version of a color. Um, hang on, let me just find some good examples right here. Because there's, there's a, we have several that are like in the 43s and then several that are in the 40s. You know. Yeah, there's no name to correlate with any of these. It's literally just the three digits. So the 40s, for example, are the turquoise and the blues. So um, I have just a sampling to kind of hold up here. So I have 143, 243, 443, 843, 943. So you can see that these all, um, the 100s, you're lighter, mm -hmm. your 900s darker. They're kind of the same hue, mm -hmm. but they get darker. Um, another example, oops, I missed one of the threes. Another example, 40, 140, 440, 540. Um, so 40s are turquoises and blues. Here's 741. This is Drew Brown's favorite right here. He told me I have to use this. 123, um, the 20s are your grays and blacks. Um, this is the most popular color. Um, 162 shortly behind it. The 60s are in the green family and also kind of get into the teal. This, this, the fours, the 64s really threw me off. Like some are green, some are teal. It was very difficult to figure out what so they like were. debatable kind of like color range. The, uh, let's see, like the 50s uh, get into your purples. So there's your 100, 400, 900 purple. Nice. And I know I'm going to have to put all these away. Yes, you are. Your 70s, these are not in order, are your yellow and your browns. Um, so for example, um, as you get higher, they get like the yellow as it becomes more saturated, actually gets a little more brown. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, 20s, there's some blue blacks in there. Your 30s are your pinks and your fuchsias um, leaning a little bit purple. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, so kind of a cool little system. Uh, Maybe we should put together a package where you can get one of every bottle. One of every bottle? How ridiculous Ooh. would that be? Even one of every sample is, but it's going to be hard to keep in stock. All he needs one color to go out of stock. And the it whole would thing be impossible. That's why we're not doing one of every. I did. Um, I do have with me some Tomoy River paper. I was, I, depending on how this broadcast went, I was like, I could swap some of these like on demand. So I mean, if you want to like swap some up while I plow through some questions. We, I wanna, I'll just we have take, a lot of questions. Tonight. I'll just take very some active of the, in the chat. I'll take some of the really popular ones. All right. You can swap some up and I'll. Hackers Drew keeps questions. raving about the 741, so I got to try that. One first, Drew, and the 123, uh, I know is. Yeah. Drew can be persistent. So 162. I got a good question here that's just for me, so you can go and do some stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, where is it? Where is it? All right, JW. Pilot Custom 74. Help! Brian, first time catching. <laughs> so dramatic. First time catching you live. What is your recommendation for changing the nib on my Pilot Custom 74? I would say, why change it? Because it's probably perfect. I'm just kidding. Um, you probably are talking about changing the nib size, I would imagine. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing is, these don't have swappable nibs, per se. Um, 
sailor's not really crazy about, or sorry, sailor, pilot, well, sailor too, but pilot, all the Japanese brands, they're not super crazy about you swapping out their nibs. Um, Here's what the sailor and so was. they, generally speaking, don't offer spare nibs. The one exception being the vanishing point, which is its own nib unit, and that's a kind of a different deal. That uh, nib is not swappable onto the Custom 74. So technically, you can swap a nib off a of Custom 74. It's friction fit. You can pull the nib and feed out. Um, so basically, the only way to do it is to have another pen and swap it between the two. You can't get a spare nib. You can't, you know, I'm not aware of like a nib exchange type thing that they have. Um, we don't have like spares or anything they, like that, they don't unfortunately. They don't provide spares. Pilots. So yeah. that's about your only option would be to have another one cool. and trade it or find someone else who wants the nib size you have and cool. create it out. That's super inconvenient, but that is what it is. Um, so it is technically possible. If you are trying to go finer, you could technically get it ground by a nibmeister to a finer nib size. And that is a possibility. Um, of course, it's not going to be covered under warranty because you're, you're altering it. But um, that could be very successful if you have a broad and you really wanted a extra fine. That's technically possible. Um, so that would be my my advice. I'm sorry. I just try to love it for what it is. Hopefully you're not trying to go broader. If so then you have no choice but to basically get another pen. All right. We had another question about Rhodia, the web notebooks. Where is it? Where is it? Oh gosh. Yeah, Jeff, the zeros, the zeros are black. So maybe zero comes after nine. That is confusing. Right. Yeah, let's see. Oh, this is gonna be a good color. Oh gosh, there's oh, sure really? right. Oh, there's so much feedback that we've missed already. Okay. Sometimes this stuff like holds up in the chat and then it just kind of oh comes Brian. Up at once. We're gonna find some good stuff over there. Yeah. Awesome. All right, let, let me try and get back dry on track a little here. bit. So there's studio that. Uh, there's a question about Rodeo paper, and I've lost it now. Yeah, uh, right there. Is the paper in the Rodeo Webbies different than the standard pads? It seems to feather a lot more. That's um, interesting. Normally, the Webby paper behaves a little better. So what can the, the happen? Web, the so, Webby paper is 90 gram, um, is. whereas the standard it's, pads are 80 gram. So like this so is uses, like a standard uses, Rodeo pad. It uses more than 90 gram Clairefontaine style paper. It's a different color, but it's that same paper. Um, if you're familiar with the Rodeo Premium, it's closer to that Rodeo Premium paper. Sometimes the reason it can possibly feather more, especially if it's down towards the bottom of the page, if you are writing and you have oily hands or sweaty hands like I do, um, sometimes when I get towards the bottom of the page, it can get kind of feathery because the oils in your hands on really slick paper like that can actually um, cause the ink, it can cause your pen to skip, it can cause it to kind of feather and stuff like that, that um, has been known to happen, especially on that slicker paper like that. So that is what I probably suspect might be happening because I've seen that before for myself. All right, let's see here, what else we got? Best Duh. retractable nib fountain pen? Um, I think the vanishing point wins in my the personal opinion. vanishing point opinion. is the undisputed king yeah. of. The Kiridos is your most affordable at this point, but the vanishing it point is, is that's just. The, that's the new kid on the block. It's just, BP is just the solid, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Matt asks, any opinions on the new Estherbrook storage? So the new Nook case. Oh yeah, they're no, nice. No reviews yet. We did get to see some samples for ourselves and we have some in, we're getting, we're photographing them. We're going to be getting them online. Oh, that's so weird. The dots like popped out of my little swab here. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. I love that. Um, we'll that's show you as soon very as, cool stuff we'll show, show you as soon as it dries enough for her to be able to hold it up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so the, the Nooks, yeah, I think they're really good. They made some improvements to them that I think are going to be uh, enjoyed by uh, many. The Conklin Courage is arriving next week. So we should be launching it, let's say, by Friday, Thursday or Friday. It's yeah. on the way. It's uh, shipping like tomorrow from California to us. Michael asks, how are you both truly doing? Hope you're hanging in there with the strangeness going on. Uh... I would say there's definitely strangeness. Uh, how are we truly doing? I mean, we're pretty real with you all. I mean, in the we, first we 20 some... seconds of this video, I talked about how I haven't been showering today. So we got that's some, pretty raw. We got some things going on. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's like personal stuff, you know, going on with, with family and things like that. That is just life stuff that kind of everybody has going on. So like, yeah. That and then you stuff. add COVID on top and everything's coming yeah. up. And school's coming up. So it's, we're... We're definitely we're... feeling the endurance aspect of all of this yeah um, we're not like despondent or downtrodden or anything but it no, is I'm, definitely I'm hopeful slog. but it's like 
Yeah. It's a lot. I, a I lot. mean, yeah, it's not unusual to have tearful days. Like, it's just, it's a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't, like, full on cry earlier today, but I had some teary moments. Oh, I full on cried. Had some tough During a meeting. <laughs> it sometimes happens. Love my team. Yeah. All right. Your FedEx facility was on CNN. It was not good. Oh, boy. I just saw that, Jessica. Jeff, I think we're glad. I'm glad they like home. the shirts. I love their shirts. They're so soft. Um, oh, yeah. Danielle, could you have ink swabs on ivory or cream paper you sell? You know, we used to do that on ivory paper. but For the website. For the yeah. website. We used to do like the swabs that we had at the swab shop. We used to also do them on ivory paper. It didn't look good. <laughs> Mainly because of the way it has to be digitized and stuff like that. There's a lot of ink that when it's on ivory paper can look a little different, but not really in digital form. Um, so we found it didn't really look that distinguishably different. And it was really difficult to make the paper look consistent. So basically what happened when we digitally rendered that stuff is we would have to color adjust the swab, the color to look accurate. And then we would have to color adjust the paper. Or if we didn't, they all looked like. The oh, brushes. they look whacked out. Yeah, because sometimes to adjust the color when you take a picture or scan it, it looks way different than real life. And so you have to color adjust it digitally to look like it actually looks in real life. Sometimes it's way more difficult than you would think, but that blows, that changes the background and makes it look wacky. And when it's white background, for any of you done photo editing, it's way easier to just like blow out the white. But if you're trying to get a color accurate ivory, it was, it was like five times the work. So it just, it wasn't worth doing. A uh, lot more questions here. Um, are shipping prices based on weight? I'm looking to get some Gulay nibs. I don't want to pay too much for shipping. So mm -hmm. yes and no. Um, we do offer first class package rate. Um, it's a flat rate of 475. And as long as it's under the weight limit, which is about 13 ounces or so, including the packing materials, um, yeah. we can charge that flat rate. Once you hit above that 13 ounces, um, then it switches to our flat rate priority, which will be uh, $6.95, $7.95, or $8.95, depending on your location, how yeah. close or far you are to Virginia. So uh, if you're international, again, there are different rates available uh, that are a little more than that because it's international. Yeah, essentially, we try to give you the most uh, cost-effective rates that we can. So the Within, answer is it varies a little bit. Yeah, but four seventy-five is our our flat rate, um, most economical option if it's light. Generally speaking, if something's light, it will be cheaper. But that's not always the most steadfast rule. Christian wants to know if there will be a restock of the Clairefontaine wire books and the Rodia hole punch notebooks. Um, yes. Uh, again, I, I feel like a broken record. It's just COVID has wrecked the supply chain. So mm -hmm. um, it's just taking longer to get things restocked um, than normal. Um, but yeah, they're on order. So every week we place new orders. So I don't have a timeline on those, but I would expect soon. Yeah. So many stock questions in here. When is this going to I know. Be, this going what to do we think of Ferris wheel press inks? They're really pretty. Um, I love their packaging. I haven't tried the inks for myself, so I can't really yeah. speak about the ink, but um, their packaging is really we were, nice. But we have, we're not carrying any new brands for the rest of the year. Yeah, we had started some talks with them yeah. like around the start of the year. And, and then, then COVID. It just all kind of got <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm not going to say it's like not possible, but it's just it's one of those things that uh, is hard to get to especially with everything that's going on right now. Lydia is getting married in April. Congratulations. All right. What pen and ink should I get to celebrate? Ooh, good question. So like what's a good, what's good memorable pen for something like mm. that? I mean, I think you go with something that like matches the colors of your Ooh, wedding. That's a good you know one. I mean? like, like guess what our bridesmaid dress colors were? Blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could, blue and purple you were could, our colors. There are so many colors out there. So I think that would be really fun to match the um, the color scheme yeah. of the wedding. I would think um, so. Or you could go or with like go a classic, classic, like a silver or like a, I don't know, like. Like the abalone shell would be pretty. That's pretty, pretty cool. Pulling in. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, I mean, you could go definitely go with something classic like that. Um, or go with like a, a just a surefire winner, <laughs> like a Lamy 2000 or, uh, you know, something that's like going to be really you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that's timeless, all about. timeless, what the kids? Yeah. They like oh, came and I don't, oh, know. I don't know. I can't uh, just, can I show you some cool ink now? Please do. All right. So we'll take a quick ink intermission. So this is on Rodia and then I have Tomoe River. Um, I have sailor ink studio one twenty three. 
I have 162 and Drew's favorite 741. So they're they're pretty good on Rodeo, but you got some of that. Um, this is a gray, but you got some pink and green sheening going on. Um, you got a little bit of shading, shading going on here too. But the magic, the magical paper, tell my river. So here's your 123. You got that pink. You got the green. Oh, and then 162 looks really cool on this paper too. It's green, but you got this pink coming out. And then you got the sheen um, on the 741 here. So it's a blue, but you got that red sheen. So this is just like magical paper for Sailor Ink. Nice. So that's cool. Mama to a six pack here says, randomly popping in. And I've always thought that Rachel's adorable. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> you have good taste. All right, let's see here. Are we getting the original Urban Anniversary ink bottles? Um, we weren't planning on it because they're really expensive. Um, and it's the same ink. Like 60 some dollars. It's not like a new color of ink or anything. For 500 mil, which I guess per milliliter is a really good value, but 500 mil is- That's a lot of ink. That's a lot, that's like half a liter. Half a liter, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then shipping and all, I just, I can't even imagine. So uh, no, we weren't planning on it. Yeah. All right, let's plow through. We got a lot of questions here. Yeah, we, we've already covered. Got, well, no, I guess we no, should. it like skipped down again. Oh, god, it does just sometimes it skips ah. down and we miss stuff. Sorry, everybody, it's just like a hang up. X Feather be back in suck, waiting on Nathan. Yeah, COVID. <laughs> Where's Hammy in his cage? He's sleeping. We did play with him earlier, he yeah. pooped on us. He poops on us every time we hold him, but at least he lets us hold him. Which studio would you match with the Wicked Witch in 1911? Ooh. That's a good question. So I need to play with some there. more. It's a lot. 97 inks at once is a lot. 752 is a good one. All right. Just, I'm go. just looking at the outside, which I know is not accurate. Use our website because those are color accurate swabs. 752 would look really good. Awesome. Um, I don't know. There's like 100 inks here. Sorry, 97 inks here to look through. Fitzgerald asks, what can I do to improve my cursive and perhaps get into calligraphy? Currently with Pilot Kakuno. Um, YouTube videos, just YouTube like calligraphy, handwriting improvement. That we have some stuff. books They're too. Good. That's um, free YouTube videos. The Art of Cursive Writing. <laughs> Art of Cursive Penmanship. Art of Cursive, thank from you. From Michael Saul. That is the yeah. best resource I've ever seen. And it's 20 bucks. It's really not expensive for what you get. We did stock up on those. So those are not going to run out of any time. Yeah. So Definitely. I can wholeheartedly recommend those. earlier this year. Michael Saul is a master penman. He is a legit authority on handwriting. So hey, Jacqueline, you're asking about the techniques. stickers a few times. We covered these at the very beginning. So I'll just show you again real quick. You got Drew's rocker, you, go. you got the Robert Oster splatter, you got a little right <laughs> on, you got the purple splatter and you got the alley turtle. Yeah. So um, super quick. Did you there answer you about the Galen, Re Galen leather writers? I did not. Galen, all things Galen leather are delayed. Yeah. Just long We've turnaround been, times. Like when we place an order, it's about the couple mm -hmm. months um, until it comes yeah. in. They're on order. I say like the, every, every, yeah, everything on our leather. website that is not on in stock is on order. It's just a matter of. Yeah. They have different craftsmen who make the leather versus their like wood products and notebooks and stuff. So pretty much it's very like disruptive. by category that stuff is like. Turkey got like real delayed. lockdown for a while there. They so they, did, got, yeah. they got pretty behind. So we anticipate major stock problems for the rest of 2020 with Gatlin. Yeah, we're doing our best, but of course, the more you order, the longer it takes. <laughs> uh, Matthew says, do we have any news about how the new Tomoe River paper performs? I don't. Um, we are supposed to get some samples soon, though. Yeah. I don't expect it to be that different, we've but we told, will, we will let you know. <laughs> we shouldn't see much of a difference. Um, so we're, we haven't tested it for ourselves, but we'll, we'll let you know what we find. Um, okay, Michael, I've heard that Sailor Nibs say on the Pro Gear generally have a certain amount of feedback. Are they still smooth writers? Or would I find them scratchy compared to, say, a Pelican M800? Mm, compared to an M800? M800, you might find it. I don't know if you can say scratchy. I would not call it scratchy because feedback -y. scratchy to me is when it feels like inconsistent <laughs> and it like digs the paper and it like, but. Some people use the word scratchy for when there's, you know, feedback on the paper. So it will, you'll definitely feel a difference between that and your M800. Um, that much I can say, but if you love the sailor pens and you really like it, you can, you can get the pen. And then you, if you want, you can get it tuned to be glassy smooth by a professional, if you so desire, um, if it's worth it to you. I just reached for an inky Q-tip set. Oh, on. that's. Awesome. Right, there you go. Now, now you just look like a legitimate pen user. <laughs> Favorite pastel inks. I would say there's a lot of sailor inks that kind of fall in the pastel. Oh yeah. Category. The high shaders. The high shading. Yeah, it's a machine too. Pretty yeah. awesome. 
I typically don't like gravitate towards pastel Ooh. inks. Okay, yep. Oh, uh, 752 is the one I recommended for Wicked Witch. That's a Wicked Witch color right It's now. wet. It's going to dry a little lighter. That is your ink for the Wicked Witch of the West. That's a good one. That's Ooh. a good one. Has a good dark purple. These are some cool colors. This is so, like, I can understand just getting, like, a crap ton of samples and just playing with these. That's why I brought them home is I want to play with them, do some splatters. Maybe we'll make a video. We'll see. We'll see. Well, these are the bottles that we swabbed everything from. We're like, oh, darn, we can't sell these now. I guess we'll have to keep them. <laughs> oh, no one's in the office to take them. Oh, I guess darn. we'll just have to. Okay, we'll bring them home and play with them, I guess. <laughs> hey, if we show it on video, that's, like, kind of legit to bring it home, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is how we justify a lot of our lifestyle here. I've been in contact with multiple of the GPC team members recently for multiple reasons. I just want to say they were great. Thank you. We think they're great too. Oh, Josh Babin. Okay. Brian, how about convincing Conklin to come out with a Purple Heart Endura and include a bottle of Noodler's Purple Heart with it? Ooh. So for those of you who don't know, Purple Heart is a wood. It is a naturally purple wood. It is. It's like a brown purple. So that's, that's the only thing is that wood, it like loses its purpleness relatively quickly like after eh, like a year or two but in a small pen like that it might lose it pretty quick so it's not going to look like a bright purple it's going to get pretty brown pretty dusty looking after time that would be my biggest concern would be people would buy the pen thinking it's one thing the wood would change its color and then people would not be so happy with it after the fact after they've all sold already so that's my only concern with using a wood that I know changes color pretty drastically. But the the pairing and the color, you know, that's that's a cool idea. That's pretty neat. I might think about that, especially because for those of you who know, so at Yaffa, the VP of sales, his name is Ken Jones. He is a, uh, a veteran. He was in the army. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure he would be all about pairing together like a military theme ink to go with a pen. But I don't know. Who knows? They also have Monteverdi has their own ink. So, you know. That might uh, be it could be a, I doubt we'd like pair it up, like you know, we might be able to do that ourselves, but they, I don't know they would do it. It's a cool idea though. I dig it. Um, more questions about Noodler's stock. It's, it's all on order. It's all on order. It's coming. Any new fountain pens like the Kakuno on the horizon? Kakuno. Say it wrong. Kakuno. Uh, not that I'm aware of. I'm not aware of anything new that's coming there. Why does the Quaker Sport Black Nib cost more than the pen itself? I don't know. They might X, they might, um, I think they're the, talking, like I the think plating the, process. They might, um, outsource is that, the, that? is that the replacement nib for the, uh, new one that's coming? The clear with black trim. We don't have replacement nibs for it. The pen is expensive. The pen itself is expensive, yeah. probably because of the plating, the black plating. Yeah, the black plating, it also comes with a deluxe clip. It comes with a converter. It comes in a special tin. It comes with cartridges. It just, you know, all that adds the price. Yeah. But I think it's just the plating process. That would be my guess. Yeah. We don't know 100% sure. Do you have a Mont Blanc 320 in your collection? Nope. I do not. Brian, Rachel, have you guys run out of blue wrap? The last few orders didn't have it, just brown paper, still a wrap safe. So we yeah. are working on more eco-friendly shipping options, which mm -hmm. means more paper, less plastic. Um, mm -hmm. So not all orders get shrink wrap. Generally, if you have loose glass bottles of ink, anything like fragile like that, um, you will still see the shrink wrap, mm -hmm. even if we're using the eco-friendly options, because if there is a breakage, it helps keep it from leaking and it. ruining your whole mm -hmm. thing. Or sometimes um, if there's paper and stuff in there that's not wrapped, we might do that to help protect it in case it gets rained, the package gets rained on or left out in the snow, it can help to protect it from the outside. So yeah. our team makes a judgment call when they're packing each order as to when to use it. But we, we're trying to use more eco-sustainable, less landfill filling stuff. And we're, we're exploring even more options, new boxes that are recycled, yeah. everything like that. We, we, actually, haven't, we haven't done a big marketing promotion about it yet, but we've been slowly transitioning to did, more and more recycled products and things like that. Yeah, we did like a big push to, 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 go achieve, green. to achieve this in actuality. And then we were going to really talk about it a lot, like from a education and marketing standpoint in the spring and COVID. Even the bubble wrap, you know, we're looking into recycled plastic, you know, all those options. Yeah. Um, can I take the medium nib from my Kakuno and put it in my fine Metro? Yep. Yes. They're interchangeable. Same nib. Absolutely. Go for it. Whatever happened to Atelier, Goy, Atelier Gargoyle sealing wax you used to carry? Mm -hmm. I can't seem to find it anywhere on any site. Yeah. yeah so at the beginning of this year, they decided to... 
I don't know the right words for it. Not be Scale a business, back. not be a business anymore. Like they said, they're not retiring. They're not selling direct. They're just taking a break, stopping the going business on hiatus. So and kind of like retro 51 or shifting kind of to, like, winding like down. they're not fully retired, but they're shifting to do something else. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, we got notice, you know, they stopped no, selling to November, to December. Retailers. Well, and direct. Like they just stopped being the thing. So they stopped making it all together. Yeah. They didn't just scale back. Yeah. They just killed it. That's what I'm saying. They decided to basically not be a business anymore. That was the best smelling aisle in the whole warehouse. Oh yeah. Because it's scented. And it was like, like right essential by, oils. It was like right in the corner as we would enter our warehouse. So like basically we just had anytime, it alphabetical. Yeah. anytime we would walk through, we would, we would smell that. Oh, it's pretty awesome. You got like all the essential oils, lavender and cinnamon. Oh, Whenever we get like a new shipment in, like opening the box, that was just. It's yes, nice. Definitely. It's like a spa. All right. Are there any pens with a number eight size steel nib? Ooh. Would you think that would be a great cheaper alternative to a number eight gold nib? I None agree. that we sell. I know of some with a number eight gold nib. So a number eight, just for your reference, that would be a larger nib yes. than a number six. We do not have any in steel. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen one. I think I've only ever seen them in gold. Yeah. Hmm. It's it's theoretically possible, but since it's not a standard size and it would have to, it would have to go on a very large pen, which is why I think it's not a standard size. I don't think that most of the new manufacturers are making them regularly. Um, so you would have to basically, so behind you would basically have to buy a lot of them as a pen company to do that. And it just hasn't happened. All right. How am I surviving with virtual school? Um, it hasn't started yet. We don't start till September 8th. We're going to go ahead and preemptively um, say it's rough. Yeah, because we it's gonna be rough. should be getting Chromebooks. We don't know when or how. Um, we should get a schedule soon. We'll find out the teachers in two weeks and who's in their class and all that. Um, they're figuring it out as they go. So it's uh, not a lot of communication. Yes. So my planning, wanting to know what my day looks like is uh, just not getting those questions answered right now, but we're gonna hang in there. Here's that. Um, we're, we're anticipating that a little bit of stress around that. There's some sheen to it, too. That is my recommendation for your Wicked Witch of the West. So that is, again, 752. Can you recommend? Okay. Island Sounds. Can you recommend a classy looking fountain pen that is affordable but also durable for everyday use? That is three different characteristics that are all 100% subjective. Classy looking, affordable, <laughs> and durable. What is classy? What is affordable? And what is durable? Well, that's all up for debate. Like, do you need to be able to run over it with your car? Because if so, we do have a class of pens that would not break if you did that. But are they classy? What is classy? And affordable. Not trying to make fun of the question. It's just like, this is very subjective. It is. I would say, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely pens that I think could fit into this range. Um, when you ask for durable, uh, this is really up for debate as to what durable means. Some people, durable means like, can I just kind of handle it with everyday use? And if I happen to drop it on the ground, it's not going to explode. Yeah, that is generally considered durable. But for some people, durable is like, I'm in the military and I need something to wear in my BDUs. And, you know, I want something we that can keep up with that. So behind in the questions. Well, oh look, my gosh. Y'all are just asking more questions. No, but we if we if we stay behind, there. like it's just oh my gosh, it's gonna keep getting worse. Okay, well, we're gonna skip some. Um we'll any chance back. we'll carry the Namiki Emperor Vermilion? <laughs> um yeah, as soon as they get some into the US, I'll get it up on our site, but we're just waiting on that. Yeah. Um if you had to say a size, how big would you say the size of the cheaper sailor nibs are? Like as in, like they're proprietary, but like as in, like number five, number five or they're approximately a number five. Size. Yeah, they're not number five, but they're approximately that size. Yes, we carry pens that can be fired from a shotgun. That is a Nathan video, for sure. Um, I mean, it didn't really survive when it was fired from a shotgun. It didn't completely disintegrate, but it was not like it wasn't. We do, we do have videos of well. running over with the car for sure. We do have something can run over the car. Um, question is this, perhaps has been discussed before. Do you ever plan on developing at least a single run of a Goulet branded fountain pen? We have definitely talked about it and timing just has never been right. Has not happened. So yeah, definitely not this it. year. It's, it's, it's in the realm of possibility. It's, there's so many decisions to make. Like, what do we want the price point to be? Do we want it American made? Do we want to go overseas? Who do we want to partner with? What are the features? Who is it for? Are these limited runs or is this an everyday pen? A lot of decisions about like, what is our brand? You know? So, yes. yeah. 
Uh, will we sell Mont Blanc inks at some point in time? I hope, but right now they will not sell to us because we don't have a brick and mortar presence. Which is incredibly ironic. Given right the fact now that, that a lot of brick and mortars are closed. Yeah. But everyone's maybe got their they, policies. Hope, maybe they'll change their Hobonichi, minds. Hobonichi, you know, there's other brands that have the same policy. They require a brick and mortar and we mm -hmm. don't have one and we have zero plans to Look, do we so. We respect that. If they got, they got their way that they want to represent their brand, we respect that. For limited editions, I often see 888. Why do they Why do they make that many? Is it a significant number? Uh, in Italy, eight is good luck. Mm -hmm. So they like to use eights on everything. And why do they make that many? Um, because globally, they can sell that many. Yeah. Sometimes if it's less, they'll do 88 or they'll do 388. Like Viscani or, or 188. Or, yeah. We did 188 for our Opera Master Luna. Mm -hmm. And we've done 88 or some other ones. Sometimes yep. they'll just do 18. So well, they have like the new... Um, well, there's that new pen we found out about today that I don't think is public yet, so I won't say it. But it's a really nice Viscani that's going to be coming out. Oh, it's like arriving this week. Oh, so it's public. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Okay. So they're doing another uh, watermark. watermark. The really cool watermark demo. supernova. So it is a rose gold overlay over a blue demo. Um, so we'll have it's it sick. next week. So that one they're doing 38. It's a very limited. Yeah. Total. Total. It's US, US only, I think, actually. Yeah. Will we have the Twisby Eco Cement Gray find it in stock again? Um, yeah, we're just waiting on the next shipment. So that's yeah. that's always how Twisby launches are. They're very start and stop, um, but then eventually the stock gets more plentiful. Oh. So, yeah. Um, so Andrew and, well, actually, let's let's go to Alex's question. What's a good replacement nibs for the Twisby Eco? So that uses a number, it uses a number four size nib. I do have a cement gray here somewhere. No, um, <laughs> not handy. Never mind. It's, yeah, it's it's close by. Um, it's probably with all the egos that I accidentally brought home. That could be. It's a number four nib. Here it is. So it's it's not super readily available, but it's not the weirdest nib size possible. But essentially, to get a spare one, you would pretty much have to buy another price. Ego. Yeah, they, they felt like given the price of the it just was not mm -hmm. economical to then provide nib units as well. So that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I can't think of another pen brand that like has an easily swappable number four nib. Um, Andrew says, when's the Abalone Endura going to be available? That's going to be relatively October. Soon. Really, yeah. So we'll the chrome trim that's our exclusive, and then the rose gold trim that everyone will have. And as those well. are limited editions, so once they're gone, they're gone, and you're gonna have to. But if it's really popular, maybe they'll do it in other trims and stuff. But I don't know. There's only, I mean, the shell is not unlimited supply. It's a natural material, but, and from what I've been told, it's like sustainably, like acquired and stuff like that. So just Eric. in case that is of concern. Thank you, Eric, for the compliments. It's very sweet. Oh. Um, Patrick asked, will we be getting the Sailor State inks? Um, we weren't planning on carrying those initially. Um, there are now four states, yeah. um, California, Colorado, Texas, and New York, um, were just launched. Um, they're a bit premium. So, um, yeah, uh, we've, sorry, I got distracted by another comment. We basically um, had the ink studio was consuming all of our time and energy. Yeah, so we swabbing were like, and color editing and like working with photographers off site and we're yeah. sending the product back and forth to each other. We were talking with our photographers. We're like, we were talking with our no new ink until we launch Ink Studio. We we're talking with our photographers and we were kind of like, so I know you're like working on 97 inks here, but like, what if we threw in like four more? <laughs> like, and no. they were like, really? Like, do you want me to like they not finish these on did time? not say any of those things they, they would have if we had asked them they and they didn't. exceeded their deadlines because they're amazing we That's actually true. thought we wouldn't be launching until september and no, here it was we more, are so it was more it was more just like well, okay let's... by focusing on those we're backlogging other stuff so now we got to get through the other backlogs so. but if but if there is like serious demand for the statings we would carry them it's just we couldn't like carry them kind of on spec uh, because we were so focused on the studio. Joseph M got a copy of Curse of Penmanship last week and he will second it being amazing. He explains things that I never, definitely never learned in writing class at school. He's, it's awesome. very legit, very legit. Um, Eric P, we do the everyday notebook. We do have the, the pocket ones. Um, I know there are some other versions of it. Um, we do have some of those, yeah. Yeah, here's a question about mobile device Rachel is there any way images enjoy. of products to able to enlarge when using your mobile device please um I will pass that along to our developers yes. go like this <laughs> your face. that's a smart I will pass smart that along. Alec comment I'll there. pass that along to our developers yeah that's an interesting that's an interesting comment 
Cool. Can you suggest red inks that don't stain demonstrator pens? Mm. It depends on the pen. Reds can be kind of stainy. Yeah. Yeah. Just the dye components of reds, even <laughs> red dye components that are in blues and purples and pinks uh, can sometimes, you know, if not like permanently stain, it kind of just like clings inside the pen. It really varies based on the material. So it's not like a universal answer. Like this ink will never cause a problem in any pen. I think just in general, the reds tend to be a little more, uh, little like hang around Chills a little bit more in the pens. Yeah. I'm trying to think of any that's like no problem whatsoever. I haven't heard a lot of problems with permanent stains. Permanent, well, some, but I haven't heard a lot of problems with like uh, pilots inks. There's no red. Uh, well, there's like Momiji. That's there's like a some pink. pink. Well, okay, like pink I colors. argued with John Lane for a long time about uh, there's okay. no true red in the line. He's like Momiji. Fine, I'm like fine. it's pink. That's that's. Or is it Yamabudo? That's fair. No, that's pink too. <laughs> Yamabudo is that's like magenta. Like that's not red. I couldn't. I would not classify it as red. Momiji is like the, the closest to red, but. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Noodler's Tokyo Gift, maybe? Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a little on the pinky side, too. Um, I'm trying to think of other reds that like would not cause problems. Well, it's, it's a red pink. It's definitely, definitely leans pink. Don't argue with Rachel about color. She I know. I like Momiji, too. Like, I'm not, I'm not dissing Momiji, but it's not a true red. Yeah. Wish you carried more hardcover notebooks with white, not every dot grid paper. I um, wish we did too. They don't make them. Yeah, the Quavadas, yeah, we were really excited to find that because it's just, it's not a thing. Like to get, yeah, to get notebooks with white dot grid paper is surprisingly uncommon. Pilot Red does have cartridges, um, but you're talking about staining a demonstrator. So I assume you're talking about like a piston. So cartridges, yeah, not, that we're not, yeah. Unless you syringe out the ink from the cartridge and put it in an eyedropper. That's inefficient. That seems like a big Cardinal Kestrel. That's a good that's a good red too. Yeah. I like Monteverde Ruby as my go-to red, but Josh, I love Diamond Red Dragon, but I honestly I haven't had it stain any of my pens that I can think of. But I'm trying to recall. Um, let's see, I saw some other questions. What is the story with Sailor Shikiori ink cartridges? Does Sailor produce other cartridges too? If so, how do they compare to each other? So Sailor does have other cartridges. They So we already had the standard inks and the pigmented inks. Shikiori is just another line. So all of these match different bottles that they have. So as far as how they vary, um, it's just different colors and properties. Um, you know, the Shikiori, there's no like one defining property of the shiki or that defines them you know mm -hmm. i mean the pigmented obviously like they have their permanent properties and water resistant stuff but mm -hmm. um they're pretty conventional inks they're just mm -hmm. different colors so we're excited just because sailor is proprietary so you either have to use a cartridge or converter and the converter doesn't have the largest ink capacity so a cartridge gives you um, more convenient options if you don't like the converter how is the shark sale Fantastic. It was really successful. A lot of sharks are in the water now. That was a good question. Okay. Um, Mac Medic, which out of stock product do you wish you had? Not for resale, but for yourselves. Out so is there stock? anything out of stock that like we want for ourselves? Like currently out of stock or like permanently out of stock? I guess we can interpret the question Ooh. however we want. That's a good question. Like stuff I missed out on. That could be a little different, like things that we don't carry anymore that you never got mm. versus like something that we just were waiting to come back in stock so that we can hoard it for ourselves. I don't have anything currently like that. I don't know that I do either. I have acquired quite a few pens during COVID life here. <laughs> yeah. It has made it very easy to justify like, oh, I got to take one because, you know, I'm going to be off site and I just need to have one now instead of borrowing one from the office. So my... My collection has not slowed down in uh, acquisition here. At what age do you recommend having children begin using a fountain pen? Have you started your kids yet? Um, mm -hmm. Our kids do use fountain pens from time to time, but it's not like a regular thing. Yeah, they I like the shark pens. I think most people start, I mean, it depends. It depends they do like the shark pens. They do. It depends on the maturity of your, your kid, you know, um, but I think some people start as early as four, five, six. Um, other people, I think it's more common around like seven, eight, 
nine, like that kind That's of. That's about how far like mid were. mid elementary school, I think, is generally a little more common because by then they're, you know, they have the kind of the maturity to, you know, hold the pen correctly and and take it slow and not like mash on the nib and stuff like that. But you know, really honestly, just like pick a pen like a, a varsity or something that like is easy to write with and. If they damage it, it's like no big deal. I love the varsity. Pen. I love the varsity because it's preloaded with ink. There's no mess. There's no like it's a medium nib. It's really you don't have smooth. to figure out how to fill it. It's just ready to go. It's very forgiving to write with. Like that's what we had our kids use for a while. Yeah. They'll probably get ink all over their fingers because Ellie, I don't even understand how she, <laughs> much. I guess they just gets. they touch the, you know the the I feet or whatever. Know. It's like children are amazing it's like she writes with it and everything looks good and i turn and around like hands, i like turn around like to like wipe, wipe my face and i look back and she's got like a purple hand and i'm like <laughs> I'll just what wait. happened you know i don't know so, um okay would flossing the rose gold nib on the smoke 580 oh excuse me help the robert oster schwartz rose flow better the what sorry it's a shimmer ink in the Twisby, would flossing the nib, would floss Robert Oster, Schwartz Rose. Yeah, that would help. We yeah, with the brass uh, brass sheet, it would help. Sometimes though, if if the if it gets kind of clogged like that, I mean, it could be. It certainly could be just in the the tines of the nib, which is where the brass sheet would help. But it could be. It could be like or... in the feed itself, in which case, you know, flushing it with with water would really be the solution there. So yeah. just clean it out. Water with a little bit of dish soap, even. And if you have a pen where you can disassemble the feed and use a toothbrush and clean out the feed, that's that's the most thorough way to do it. This so is a 580 like, You can take the feed out, but it's a little delicate. So I would try just flushing it with water first. Try, you know, disassembling. The shimmer inks require a bit more maintenance, yeah. for sure. You can't leave it sitting in there. Yeah. Um, we'll do a couple more questions and then we will um, wrap this up. Cool. Um, do the Peniter Quill Flex Nibs come out of the grip section? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, you can remove those. They're they're like a kind of a proprietary size, um, so I don't know that you would necessarily be able to like swap them onto a bunch of other pens. I'm so sorry, I'm making you all yawn. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if I have done that before. Uh, I can't recall if we tried like swapping it out, but yeah, more or less you can do it. But they call it a flex nib, but I I wouldn't classify it as a flex nib the way that most people associate flex. It's a very soft nib. But it's not like a noodler's nib where you can just like bleh, mash it down and it writes really wide. Is there any hope that Pilot might replace the Con 40 with another type of piston converter? Um, I would maybe. Never say never. Yeah. Um, Is there any hope? Yeah. We are, believe me. There's not no hope. We are advocating for that as much as we know how to do. Yeah. <laughs> they are very well aware They're of They're aware of something. how especially Americans feel about the yeah. Con 40. Yeah. But we're going to keep, we're gonna keep our, beating that, that drum. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to wrap this up. As far as um, just wanted to address real quick, um, as we start getting towards school, <laughs> we're going to repurpose this room. This is our dining room, which we haven't actually eaten in in like six months. We're going to be repurposing it as a school room. We got desks for the kids and um, they'll have their laptops and headphones on that stuff. So we are figuring out where to do videos on going. But I think in it's the next... Just actively in conversation about how are we going to continue to do all of this when we have two kids on virtual learning so, and work and everything else to balance out. What are you doing? So we might have to consider. We have like big lights and things like yeah. that. So in the next week, um, we might be tearing down the setup and, you know, Brian might be going back to the office and shoot periodic. We're figuring it out. Yeah. So. The future of this broadcast, right time at nine, um, especially once school starts, it's straight up, it's going to be hard for me. Um, it's uncertain. And even the next couple weeks as we prep. So I don't want to say it's over. I also can't say we're going to do it every week. So I think yeah. what we're going to try to do is do it as we're able. Um, and we will announce ahead of time. We'll put our email blast or on social ahead of time. But I think it's going to be a little difficult for us to commit weekly, um, which really sucks because we really miss doing videos the way we used to. But it's just straight up hard, all being remote. Drew's working a different place. You know, Brian's here. We our video is working out of his home. You know, like it's it's just 
everything's and the products are in the office. It's like you guys asked to see something. I'm like, oh shoot, forgot ah, to pick that up today. No, we don't have it. Oh well. So as much as I we want to ramp up the videos, COVID just isn't going away mm-hmm. as we thought it would by this point. Yeah, and it's um, saying, so we have all these ideas. We have all these things that we want to do. And it's just like, dang it, okay, we can't do that. Or you know, I mean, we're shooting this. It's 10 o'clock at night. Like Our kids been, are still awake because that's just where we're at right now. We've basically been working for 14 hours at this point, like being real. So you put in some 14 hour days and then you're cleaning the house and doing all the other stuff on top. Well, of and then, well, you get tired. That's well, like these bags under my eyes. Like these are like permanent. Like I'm say, just tired. Starting in three weeks, uh, we have school and I have uh, yet to uh, know how much is going to be required of me. I'm sure the first couple weeks are going to be a little rough just getting used to things, even just like getting ready earlier in the morning than we've been waking up and like no really kids you actually do have to get dressed yes i know you're just on a camera but you do have to get dressed you know? we'll like, see what that looks like we'll be like are you at least have to put on like a shirt well like, and you like keep your pajama pants on but like they're only giving us 15 minutes for lunch because they're mimicking what's happening in person and in person they're trying to minimize the mask thing and they're saying it's such a mess. We're like 15 minutes. 15 minutes is not enough time to make the lunch and eat the lunch. Crap. We got to make the lunches the night before. Even ourselves. though we're here at home. <sighs> so just gonna, little things like that. We're going to see what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are being so, so, so supportive in the chat here. Yeah. Um, and are, to all are. the parents out there, like, we, we are, feel yeah. <laughs> like, we are, we're, we're, being, gonna, we're gonna be okay. There's there's just it's it's a period of change and there's other things going on in our lives too, you know, with different things and it's it's a lot and it's hard. Um we have a great support system, we have each other, our kids are happy, Hammy brings a lot of joy to our lives <laughs> getting hamster yes. with we got a class pet now. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are we are doing okay. We're but giving is, ourselves so much grace. It like, is a lot. There are some days like yeah. I'm not working 14 hours a day because I just can't. Like I just hit a wall like, and I'm like, work's gonna be there tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just not pretty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like let's go on a family walk. Forget the world. Let's just spend some time together. Yeah, I don't know when like recess because I'm like you'll get a 10 minute stretch break. I was like, is that recess? Like I don't know. What does that mean? They're figuring it out. They might like have this master schedule and then they do it and they're like okay, these kids, like, they need more breaks because they're getting all squirmy in their chairs and stuff. So, <laughs> so the long story short, we hope to keep seeing you on a regular basis, but <laughs> truly family first. Yeah. Um, so if we, and family first also includes ourselves and our mental health. So if there are some nights that we're just like- Do we have any left? Any mental health? <laughs> <laughs> Are we t- <laughs> I'm like in trouble understanding uh, Dur- you because that's how Doreen and I am. I'm yeah. like, what? The mental health, yeah. Is Do there, we have is mental there any health? Le- is there any left? Do we have any left? I'm oh, man, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. You, you kind of just have to laugh. And I feel like so bad for so the high ridiculous. schoolers who they're not getting their proms and their oh, homecomings man. and yeah. they're not getting to see that cute guy by their locker at school and whatever. And, you know, like, you know, the... The, the all little the, all the things like that bring we joy were in show life choir in things. high school and like so like there's so many people who just this year is gonna it just sucks Let's yeah just, if this had happened at our senior year of high school we never would have met because we met at a singing event our senior year of high school that's true so think of all the kids that aren't going to meet their you know soulmates at a singing event <laughs> this year as high schoolers all <laughs> like one or two of them probably <laughs> that would end up happening to too how are you going to do? And you never but thank you. We feel, we feel yeah, super. Yeah, come over here. Say bye to everybody. <laughs> Why are you jumping? Can I say bye to you? But they can't see your pretty face when you jump. <laughs> I can see my pretty face. <laughs> Good to look at this uh, Jude here. Jude or Judy? I don't know. I'm going to say Jude. But, Where? Um, 15, 15 year old female. I'm going to go say yeah. sorry to my parents in the morning for the school stress. Look, you got school stress too. You're the one actually. That's it. what made me think of so high like, school and all the things you're missing more power out to on. You. More power to yeah. you. It's, it's tough for everybody. It's tough on the teachers. It's tough on administrators. This is just really tough for everybody. So we all need to just chill out, show some love to each other, give some grace to what each other. What are you other. looking at, Ellie? And uh, that said, we need to get our kids to bed. Yeah. And we need to get ourselves, you know, some ice cream. That's probably what I'll do. And then bed. You already got ice cream, Daddy. I might have more. Who knows? <laughs> We didn't get Hashtag coping. I'm just kidding. You, you um, 
cookies. I'm kidding. They both had cookies. Yeah, you had cookies. Yeah, they both had cookies. Yeah. Just half a cookie. Yeah. Yes, half a cookie. And, and it's soda you for dinner. Too. It's soda for dinner, it's too. I know. Ellie ate an entire bag of grapes <laughs> for breakfast this morning. No, she had, some, she had some of them last night. But it was like a big bag. Like a whole bag. Well, it was like five servings of grapes. She loves like, her fruits and veggies. didn't know that that many. It just, you know, she's like me. She loves her. Loves her fruits loves and veggies. Sweets. Loves her fruits. Which is like Hammy. Yeah, yeah, Hammy likes veggies too. Oh, and yeah. fruit. All right. Thank you, everybody, so much. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for all your support. Absolutely. It means so much. Good luck to you. We're thinking about you all. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Right on. Bye. Right on. <laughs> Peace.